Hi guys, please like, share and subscribe and contact this number if you want full lectures of any CM or CS subjects. Thank you. Hey guys, in this video we are going to learn about importing and exporting data from R or to R from various sources. There are three fundamental ways of doing so. The first is manually. That is making the vectors, making the data frames, defining objects that we have covered so far. The second is using data sets included in R packages. And the third is from another program such as Excel. So the data sets within the R packages is something I have already touched in the data frame tutorial. We saw that empty cars and iris data sets are already present in R and we can directly use them. There is again a package called data sets like you can see here which is an interface for loading data sets and naturally as the name suggests is it has a lot of data sets already present in it which you can directly use. You can install this package and activate it in order to use all the data sets under it. Other than that the mass package also has above 80 data sets already present within it and there are other various packages available where you can use the data sets from. The third way of importing data sets from other programs is something we are going to concentrate on. We can import data from various sources like text documents, CSV files, Excel and other statistical packages such as SAS or SPSS. Let's get into importing data from text files. All right. So here I have created a few data files that we will be using in this tutorial. The first one is data one. When I open it, there is a notepad open where you can see there are five numbers in on separate lines. Let's import it to R. So one of the easiest ways to do it is using the import data set option over here. For importing text files use the first option from text base. So here you can open the data file that you want, browse and open it and you can change the name of the data set that you want. All right. So let's say we just name it data. There are various options here. We'll go through them one by one. So as you can see the first value here is a little different than what we defined. You can change that value in the text file itself or after it is imported over here. We will not get into how exactly to do that right now because we don't need to learn it right now. Right now we will just focus on importing the data set. So the encoding here should be automatic. If there is a heading in the input file itself you can choose the yes option over here. Row names is set automatic. Separators are basically if you have a lot of columns in it you may have used tabs or you may have used commas here it is set to white space the decimal points that we have used in the uh, input files will be of the period form this is something that are by themselves have detected from our input file all right so if we will we'll see how exactly all these options change when we import some other type of data set so the quotation marks will be in the form of two inverted commas there are no comments and if there are any strings present here in our input file they'll be of the form na in capital letters and we know the strings as factors option and uh, we can either select yes or no and we can just go to import all right so here another tab has opened where we can see our data. We can see the object name data has appeared on a global environment and there is something that has happened on the back end that we do not need to worry a lot about. Let's type data and see what exactly has it shown. So as we saw there was some discrepancies of in the first value that we had defined and the rest is just fine all right we can check the structure of the object which says it is a data frame so this suggests that r by default imports data in the form of a data frame all right there are five observations and there is one variable the other way of doing this is using commands so let's say we make another data set called data1 and we use the command read table so read table is the function that you use for importing text files only so within inverted commas you can write the name of the file remember that when you do this when you are using the command your working directory should be set to the location of this file so we can check if our working directory is set right with command get wd we discussed this earlier and it says it is set to 
the place where I want it to be. Otherwise, you can just go to the sessions menu and set the working directory, choose a directory file and change it. All right. Now I'm, I'm defining another object called data one using the read table function. This has shown a warning because of the discrepancy in the first observation. You can see the data set is already defined. We can check what exactly it is like we saw earlier. All right. Now let's say we have multiple columns involved in a data. Let's name it data2. We can see the object data2 has been defined and this is what it appears with. Now you can see that there is something called v1 and v2 and v3 above our columns and then the first row observation is given the headings that we have defined in our data file. So we can definitely see there is a problem with the headings over here. So there is an argument called header. We can set that to true and then run the command. This will basically tell R that there are headings that we have already provided in the forms of names. All right. So here now you can see there is no V1, V2, V3 appearing above our column names. And the row names are the indexed numbers over here. Everything else looks fine. As far as the row names are concerned, we can set something of our choice as well with the row names function over here. And you can set it to anything that you want. And now when you run it, you can see the row names are now A, B, C, D and E. So when you import data files from using the import data sets option, you can see there is something called NA strings, right? We have told R that the fields that are going to be empty are in, going to be in the form of capital NA. You can change it to say a hyphen or anything else as long as they are in the same format defined in the input file. All right. We need to tell R that this is how we have defined the empty fields. Let's come to importing CSV files. So CSV stands for comma separated value and CSV is to Excel what notepad is to word. So essentially it is a stripped down Excel file that removes all the formatting and separates the value in the cells with commas. Okay. This is how a CSV file typically looks on a notepad. So basically all my values are separated with commas over here. Or there is another CSV file that I had defined using Excel and saved it as a CSV instead of a workbook. And when you open it, you can see it opens in Excel itself just normally only while making it and saving it I use the save as option and saved it as a data file which has CSV format so you can see here in the save as type I have selected the CSV format that we needed so just like importing text files we can import CSV files as well using the text function only so be because we had defined it as a text file we can do that we're going to name it as data3. You can see the input file has commas over here and the data frame that is going to be created will not have commas instead. Why? Because the separator itself got changed to a comma. So let's say if I had put it as, as white space, there were not going to be commas that disappeared. So I can change it to commas to tell R that this is a CSV file. The separators are commas. And similarly, you can import it or otherwise we can use a command called read csv so here similarly you put the name of the file from your working directory itself just run it you can open data 3 and see how exactly does it look it looks just fine the headings as well are properly sorted over here we do not need to worry about that Let's see what happens if you use the read table command and import the same file. When you do that, because we haven't given R the information that it is a CSV file, there are going to be commas appearing as we discussed and the V1 here shows that is basically the headings are not defined over here. So when we use the read CSV function and uh, type data4 with an extension of .csv because we created it with... Uh, Excel and here we created data 3 with a normal notepad. So with the notepad we have the extension called .txt but with Excel we have the extension called .csv. When you run that you can see everything appears just normally without any formatting like that of Excel. So how exactly do you know what extensions are used over here? So when you want to know the extension of any particular file you can just right click on it 
choose the properties option and on this box you can see type of file option basically shows what kind of a file it is so here it is showing that it is a .csv so while importing along with the name you have to type .csv within two inverted commas and you will be good to go similarly we can check for data 3 here you can see the extension is .txt because it was a text file so now in order to import data from excel you need a package called OpenXLXS. I have the package pre-installed. I'll just activate it first. And now we can go to import data sets. Choose from Excel. When this window opens, we can browse our file. My data 5 file was a Excel file. I can see how exactly does it look over here. I can change the name over here. I can change other options available. Uh, my NAs are going to be blank here. And you can change, you can explore more. And I'm just going to import it. I can shut this down and just see how does it look. So this is how an imported Excel file looks, all right. So most of the times we will be importing data from CSV files or text files. Rarely do we use Excel. You can also import files from say SPSS, SAS or STATAS. And for that you can just explore using the help tab available over here. We wouldn't be using those. We don't usually have the softwares as well to explore those options. But in case you are interested, you can take the help of the internet. And there is also something known as exporting data from R to other software packages. So you may export data to Windows clipboard, a text document, a CSV file, Excel or other statistical packages like SAS and SPSS. So you can use all these commands to export data from R to other things. So write clipboard is the function that um, exports data sets from R to other clipboards like Word or WordPad. Write table exports to text files. Write CSV again to text files or Excel files. XLS to proper XLS files and write foreign to other statistical softwares. You can explore these options again with the help of the help tab we have over here or use the internet. You can even um, explore with the things that we have already learnt over here. It's not very difficult. We are going to be using very basic things only. Exporting is not going to be a problem. Most of the times we'll be using one single line of command and we'll just take care that our working directories are set nicely. All right, that is all that you need to know about importing and exporting of data. This is something that you may practice. You can pause your video here and go around with these things. And this is again all that you need to know before starting with specific topics of CS1 and CS2 respectively, right? So this is basically the basic R. We have covered everything that we need to know. And from here on, we'll be concentrating on the subjects with their specifics. All right, this is it for now. See you again later.